Okay, so round two, we are back out here at the Beacon with the Chevy 3500 HD. We have the Kurt hitch positioned at its highest level, which is actually going to be needed. At the second from the lowest level, we had an issue because this only cleared the bed rails by about two inches. So we need to get about six inches, and this is going to raise everything up about four inches. So we should be right at that six inch point. If you guys didn't see the previous video, check it out because there are some really, really cool aspects to owning a regular cab truck like this when it comes to hitching up. Actually, I'll probably show you in this video too. First thing we need to do is take the proven lock off of the kingpin so we can have access to it. Then we are gonna proceed with hitching up. Okay, for some reason I lost audio here. What I'm doing is securing the jaws around the kingpin, pushing the arm in and putting the pin in place, which ensures that the jaws can't open whenever you're traveling. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to perform a tug test is to go ahead and plug your trailer in. And what this is gonna ensure that I do is have my trailer brakes working. And then I am going to pin that in place. Okay, for some reason I started having some major microphone issues, so I'm going to kind of narrow it through this. So once you get your cable connected and your breakaway connected, you ensure that your jaws are closed. To perform the tug test, you need to go ahead and retract all of your levelers. In the case of this RV, all six levelers. Once everything is retracted, I'm going to lower the front landing gear of the fifth wheel. All right, so now all the pin weight is on the back of the truck. Next step is to lower your front landing gear so they're just barely off the ground or barely touching. Because this utilizes a hydraulic system and they both don't go down at the same time, you'll have to essentially drop them down until you remove the weight of the pin off of the truck and then lift them up until one of them is just barely touching the ground and the other one is slightly off of the ground. This is basically to ensure that you don't have any weight resting on the landing gear. If there is, it's very, very minimal. And the fact that I'm doing this on a gravel parking area ensures that there's no chance that I'm gonna damage the landing gear during the tug test. Okay, so now we're back in the truck and we're gonna perform the actual tug test. So what you wanna do is put the vehicle into drive, All right? We're gonna hold the trailer brake down completely. And then we're simply gonna try to pull forward just a hair and the truck's not moving. It basically stopped the truck. So the truck wants to pull forward, but the trailer brakes are keeping it still. And if the kingpin wasn't securely clamped into the fifth wheel hitch, it would have slid off the back and just rested on the landing gear that was down. But that's essentially it. That's a really quick way to do a tug test, just to be sure that you're coupled properly and you don't have the chance of your kingpin sliding out of your fifth wheel connection. Okay, now that we've performed the tug test successfully, I can go ahead and lift my tailgate and I can retract all. And then this will simply lift the landing gear up. And you'll see as this one comes up, no more load will actually be transferred to the truck because this one's just barely touching the ground. And we're on gravel as well. So the tug test just consists of trying to move forward a couple of inches just to verify that you don't have an open coupler on your fifth wheel hitch and you prevent dropping the front of your fifth wheel on the back of your truck. Now I gotta admit, this is a pretty cool view of the front of your fifth wheel from right behind the cab. Typically on a crew cab truck, you have the secondary seats that you have to see past and there's no way you would get this just enormous front row view of your fifth wheel hitch all connected, which is kind of cool because you can just look right behind you to see if everything's okay for the most part. And again, it's just super easy to hook up and to disconnect when you can see your connection right there. Absolutely love that. So to be completely honest with you, I still don't have the type of clearance I would typically like to see with a fifth wheel overhang over the bed rails. Quite frankly, I only have about four, maybe four and a half inches of clearance between the top of the bed rail and the bottom of the fifth wheel, which means I would need to either raise the fifth wheel hitch up even further, which I can't do because 
I'm at the highest setting currently, or I would have to adjust the kingpin down further, which I don't know if I can really do. I'm kind of left with a quandary here because I don't specifically know where there would be additional adjustment points to make this adjustment the way I would need it. The truck sitting up high isn't really a factor either because this limitation right here is really with the hitch. And as you can see, I have it in its very highest setting. So I am a little confused. I really don't know how you'd be able to get it any closer to the six inch point that you would need. Because again, I'm probably at about four and a half inches. And that's me probably giving it a little bit of credit there. But we'll see. It's, sh it's certainly enough for me to do the little maneuvers I plan on doing here just to see how everything looks going down the road. So let's hit the road with this thing. Definitely a beautiful, beautiful fifth wheel behind a really cool looking truck. You don't know how many people so far stopped me and said, is that a dually? That is a really cool truck. So having something like this definitely gets a lot of compliments. And of course they had to send it to me in red, but check that out. Okay, so we are off. We are on the road towing this 2021 Van Lee Beacon 42 RDB behind this 2020 Chevy Silverado 3500 HD regular cab work truck edition Duramax diesel two wheel drive truck. And has no problem towing. It really doesn't. It is pulling this relatively heavy fifth wheel. It's not a super heavy fifth wheel, but for a non-toy hauler, right now as it sits, it's right around 16,500 pounds. If it were fully loaded, it'd be closer to 18,500 pounds. This actually weighs 2,500 pounds more empty than our previous Chaparral did full. So this is not a light load. This is definitely a relatively heavy fifth wheel with a really interesting truck towing it. Because again, this isn't the typical truck most people get. This is a work truck. What I can tell you right off the bat, without a doubt, the suspension on this truck is tamed down significantly. It does not feel even remotely close to as harsh as it did before when this is unladen with no fifth wheel on it. With roughly 3,500 pounds resting over the back of this truck, it makes the ride significantly more pleasant. giving it just about everything here. 45, 47, 50, 51 miles an hour. Now let's get on the expressway. And you know what's also kind of interesting is it doesn't feel the same as a crew cab inside. You feel the movement of the trailer a little bit more suddenly. It doesn't feel as if it's far behind you like you would typically feel with a crew cab truck or a longer wheelbase truck. The truck itself actually feels kind of compact, if that makes sense. Now, because the weight of this fifth wheel is resting over the axle, I'm not picking up any type of weird sway or movement, but it definitely feels a little different. It feels more sudden, if that makes sense. If you've hauled a fifth wheel around, you might know what I'm talking about, where when you hit a bump, you go over something, you kind of feel it delayed just a hair, and that's partially because of that extra length. But the, the three feet that this is missing gives you a little bit more of that sudden feel. I guess the way my wife would describe it is, it's if you sit in the back seat of a crew cab dually truck, 
you kind of feel things a little bit differently than you do if you're sitting in the front seat. Things feel a little bit harsh or more sudden. Whereas this truck, it all kind of feels the same as if you were sitting in the back of a crew cab truck. I hope that makes sense. Overall though, it's a very pleasant towing experience. Like I said, the weight of the pin resting on the back of this truck absolutely has settled down the suspension. It's a far more pleasant driving experience. You don't feel like a bump causes a truck to kind of bounce all over the place. And this truck is specifically set up to haul heavy weight. We're not dealing with a truck here that the vast majority of people would get to haul their family around. If you get a truck like this, you almost entirely are gonna use it to haul something heavy. And a fifth wheel like this is a perfect example of what you might haul with it. You gotta love these large turnaround lanes that you see in areas where a lot of trucks travel. Okay, so I'm flooring it right now. You can definitely tell that 10 speed is shifting up through its gears at 47. It's definitely some weight back there though. It doesn't feel light. You know, when you're cruising, you could use that old saying, you know, you can't even tell it's back there. But the reality is when you're accelerating and when you're stopping, you can certainly tell that you have something heavy behind you and you should be able to. The last thing you want is to tow something heavy and forget that you're towing it. That can lead to what I mentioned in a previous video called complacency, where you just feel so confident all the time that you forget to do something and that thing that you forget to do causes an accident or injures somebody or just puts you in a really awkward position that you have a hard time getting out of. Okay, so we are getting back on the expressway. So far, yeah, not having any issue towing this trailer. You know, if you are looking for a truck that is relatively low cost, but you need a lot of towing power and a lot of payload capacity, this is really the perfect type of truck for that scenario because it's gonna give you just about everything you want as long as you don't need the extra seating capacity. Like I said, there's a lot of couples that travel around the country and you're just looking for something basic. You're looking for a truck that doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it does have a few luxury features that are important to you. It does have power windows and door locks, Bluetooth. You know, Bluetooth is incredibly important, especially if you're using the navigation on your phone, if you're listening to Audible, if you're listening to the radio or music, things like that can be really, really important convenience features without having to go to heated and cooled seats or massaging seats or a sunroof, all the stuff that a lot of people may not care about. This truck is really the ultimate package for folks like that. What's also nice is that you have room to recline the seat. This isn't like those old work trucks in the past where you couldn't recline the seat because the seat back was right up against the rear bulkhead of the cab and you just had no option in terms of real adjustability. This truck, you have plenty of room to recline the seat. The seats are more than comfortable even in their vinyl configuration. And I was a little worried about that before I got the truck, but even the vinyl seats, very comfortable. And it's not a surprise because fleets that purchase this truck for fleet service don't necessarily want employees that are complaining about back pain when they get back from a job, right? They, they would prefer a truck that doesn't have an expensive interior while at the same time providing a relatively comfortable interior. That way everybody wins. But I gotta tell you, I've been very impressed with this truck. It's a really cool package. I'm not going over all the nitty gritty detail like you would see in a high country or you know a higher trim package. You know, when I do King Ranches or I do Laramie Longhorns, mainly because this is a work truck. It gives you all the basic things that you would expect from a work truck. But on top of that, it gives you some really nice convenience features because this has a relatively low cost convenience package added to it plus the fact that it has the fifth wheel gooseneck prep. This one was specifically shipped with the Kurt 25K hitch in it, which is really awesome. It's just a very, very cool truck. I think a lot of folks see work trucks as purely work trucks, when in fact a work truck of today is nicer than most luxury trucks of 15, 20 years ago. And that's something worth considering. Anyways, guys, we are gonna take this RV back, get it all unhitched, and wrap this one up. Guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.